Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to create droplets for Adobe Acrobat Pro. So what is a droplet exactly? Well, let's say that we have a PDF file that we need to run a pre-flight for, and we want to apply that pre-flight to not only one file, but multiple files simultaneously. The way to do that is to create a droplet. So I have a couple droplets here that I've already created. Actually, I'm going to delete this one because we're going to start from scratch. But basically, if you look here, we have an application. And it's an application that doesn't need to be put in your actual application folder. It can actually run anywhere on your hard drive. It doesn't matter. You can put it on your desktop. You can leave it here in an individual folder somewhere for easy access, wherever you want to put it. And basically, what it is, is just, it's an icon that you're just going to be allowed to go ahead and drag multiple files to and run a pre-flight. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to create one. But first, let's take a quick look at this flyer here. If I go to my output preview, you can see here if I go into CMYK, everything disappears. If I click RGB, everything shows up. So this is something that I want to convert to CMYK only. Normally what I'll do is I'll just go to print production, I'll go to pre-flight, I'm going to run this convert to CMYK only pre-flight here, and I'll just save it as a new file and I'll just call it CMYK. It'll go ahead and run that, and then if I go back to my output preview, you can see here all of the RGB is gone, and it's now everything is set up in CMYK. So it ran that successfully, now I'm ready to send that off to press for instance. But what if I need to apply that to multiple files? like this, all five of these at one time. I'm going to go back to our, or, uh, Adobe Acrobat. I'm going to go to my tools. I'm going to go to print production. I'm going to go to pre-flight once again, except that now in the top right hand corner, I'm going to go ahead and click options and I'm going to click on create droplet. This is where we are going to set up our droplet for whatever check that we want to um, run in the background. So in this case, since I had convert to CMYK only already selected, it shows up here, but I can choose any of the different um, pre-flight profiles that I have on my computer. Um, but in this case, obviously, this is the one I want. I can choose to run this profile without applying any fix-ups if, if I want to. Um, this would be useful if you just want to check a file, but you don't want to actually change anything. Um, in this case, I do want to make the changes, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Here is uh, where we want to, what we want to do with the file if it's successful. So basically, it's going to run the pre-flight if everything comes back and it's 100% um, uh, successful. What do we want to do with it? So in this case, I'm going to move the PDF file to a specific folder. I'm going to select this success folder here, and I've already created this folder. I've created an error and success folder here. So I'll hit choose. I'm going to do the same thing down here for on air, and I'll choose the air folder. Go down here, choose. So now it'll go ahead and it'll move it to that folder if it's successful. If it fails for whatever reason, it'll go ahead and move it into that air folder. You can also create an audit trail, which basically allows like kind of a, dig, a digital signature to show that everything's been verified to run a pre flight for. Um, this sometimes some commercial print shops will require that, uh, but not very often. But if you want to create that audit trail, you just select that checkbox. You can also create a detailed report and save it to some other folder if you choose to. Same thing for an error folder if you want to. Down here, I do want to select the uh, checkbox that says display a summary PDF with a list of files for which preflight found errors or warnings. This will basically just give you a summary to show you, hey, look, everything was successful or certain things um, had errors because of these reasons. Just nice to have it. That way, in case there are problems, you can go back and you can fix it later. So with every, uh, everything set, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'll just save this as convert PDF to CMYK. You just want to name this with whatever, you know, whatever naming convention uh, suits you so you remember exactly what this pre-flight is going to do. So I'll save it in that same folder I'm working on. I'll hit save and then let me go ahead and close this all out and go back to my finder and you can see here I've created a new application called convert PDF to CMYK. 
The problem is, is that if I try to run this for whatever reason, there's an issue on Apple OS that it won't allow you to. And you can see here it says it's uh, uh, damaged, it can't be open, you should move it to the trash. There's nothing wrong with it. Basically, this is just a security feature to make sure that there's no um, virus or malware going on. To get around it, you go up to your Apple menu, go to System Settings, go down to Privacy and Security, and then go all the way down to the bottom where it says Convert PDF to CMYK. That's the application we just tried to run. And you can see here it says it was blocked to protect your Mac, and it could not verify that it was free of malware might harm your computer. In this case, we know it's not going to harm our computer. We just we were the ones that just created it. So I'll click open anyway. I'll click open and then it's going to prompt you for your password for your computer. Once you put that in and click OK, it'll pop back up showing you that the application is now ready to run basically. So I'll go ahead and close that, close that out. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight those five files and I'm going to go ahead and drop them in here. And immediately the pre-flight profile or pre-flight window pops up. You can see here pre-flight checks are being issued to those five different files. When each one is finished, it has a little green checkbox or check mark. And then when the last one finishes, it's going to pop up with this summary PDF that if I zoom in here, you can see 342 successful fix-ups were applied, no failures, and that's the case for all five of these files because basically it was just the same five, same file that I just duplicated five times. I'll close that out. I don't want to save it. Now that folder, or excuse me, that uh, all those PDFs have been moved from the, the uh, parent folder down into the success folder down here. And if I just click one of these open real quick and go into my output preview and click on RGB, you can see everything disappears and CMYK shows up so everything has been converted successfully and now I'm ready to send off all five of those files to press. So that's how you can uh, create a droplet. Um, I already have this one here for a creating a eighth of an inch bleed. I have these business cards here. You can see here there's uh, it's size only to 3.5 by 2. It's front and back. I need to go ahead and I need to add bleed to all of these there are eight different instances of this file. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move that over here real quick. And you can see it's gone through and it's batch processing all eight of those files. Boom, 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 boom. Now it's done, or will be done in a second. It brings up my uh, error report here, which there's no errors, everything's green. I'm gonna go ahead and close this without saving. And then if I open up any one of these uh, new PDF files, you can see now it's 3.75 by 2.25 in size. Basically the pre-flight that I had set up was the, um, if I go into my print production here, pre-flight, I have a fix up here and it is a create a 0.125 inch bleed by uh, mirroring, I'm sorry, to this one right here. And if I come back into my folder here, and just double click on that application, you can see here which uh, fix up I have applied. And in this case, it's the add 1.25 bleed by mirroring profile. So that's how you can quickly do that for uh, multiple instances. I have another one here, but it's just kind of redundant. I, um, I was gonna show a third example, but basically this, it's the same premise. I have a pre-flight profile set up already that converts everything over from one uh, CMYK value to a Pantone color, and it will run for however many instances you put in there. So that's a quick way to apply that to multiple PDF files simultaneously. Again, these can live anywhere on your computer, so if I decide to just take this and drag it to the uh, desktop, that way I have access, it, access to it quickly. If a customer sends me files and I need to quickly apply, you know, a, a one eighth of an inch bleed by mirroring, I can just go ahead and boom, drag all those files in there. Uh, you can do it one file at a time if you want. That also saves you the time of having to open the file, go to the pre-flight, um, the print production to the pre-flight, find the, you know, the profile that you want to use. So it allows you to just go ahead and apply that pre-flight very, very quickly 
So it makes uh, things a little bit more efficient as far as your workflow is concerned. So I hope that helps some folks. Um, I've had some people ask me, you know, how do I apply a pre-flight to multiple files simultaneously? For whatever reason, uh, droplets just kind of, I was drawing a blank there. I used to use dro uh, droplets all the time when I first started in pre-press and kind of got away from it a little bit, but this is the way to do it very quickly, very efficiently. Um, you can apply any of your different pre-flights that you have set up in Adobe Acrobat uh, uh, in your pre-flight settings. So it just allows a much more efficient workflow. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'm happy to help. If you want to support the channel, just click that like uh, button. It always goes a long way. Share the video with other folks if you can. Subscribe if you haven't uh, already subscribed to the channel. If you want to do a little bit more, please check out the Patreon page. Um, it's there's lots of things that I have available for um, uh, sample files and other pre-flights available for purchase, things like that. Uh, for instance, I'll go ahead and I'll package up all of the files that I've been using in this particular video, and I'll have that available for sale on the Patreon page. If you are a paid member of the Patreon, you get access to all of that stuff for free. Again, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate the view. Questions, leave them down below. And until next time, take it easy.